This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures was brought to you by the Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammo packages for hunters. When I think about antelope hunting, the first state that comes to mind is always Wyoming. And while all of the Western states have populations and hunting seasons for antelope, there is one area best known for trophy quality. Hunters looking to hunt for and harvest better than average pronghorn go to Northern New Mexico. The plains south of Raton near the small town of Springer, New Mexico are full of antelope. However, because this area is primarily all privately owned ranches, there is little public access and antelope licenses are only obtained from the landowners or the outfitters that run hunting on those same ranches. This lack of public access and the very limited number of landowner vouchers means that under proper management, the pronghorn bucks can live long enough to reach maturity and grow to trophy size, making these landowner vouchers some of the most coveted pronghorn permits in all of North America. This year, we booked a camp for a Steve's Outdoor Adventures exclusive week, inviting a few longtime clients and friends during the opening three days of the season in late August. I was joined by Travis Price from our office, as well as professional hunter and good friend, Tony Smotherman. And we have joined the rest of the guests at the Outfitters Tented Camp east of Springer on over 30,000 acres of private lands that he has leased for guided hunting. In late August, the weather is nice and makes for some comfortable camping weather. And as soon as we rolled in and got settled, the first order of business was to hand out the pronghorn licenses, then set up the shooting table, hang some targets, and start shooting our rifles. Now this week we're hunting out of trucks, so we really don't care how heavy the rifle we're hunting with is because we're not carrying it anywhere. We decided to set up the new Bergara Premier Series HMR Pro chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Thought this gun would be the perfect tool for the job this week. Now it's flat shooting, hard hitting, but to maximize its effective range, we topped it with the Burris Eliminator 3 laser scope and we outfitted it with the Dead Air Sandman Suppressor. This gun went to Pendleton Ammunition for load development and is shooting quarter MOA, putting three rounds in one hole. This is an extremely accurate gun. It's hard hitting. Both Travis and I had practiced with it for months and we were feeling very confident at 750 to 850 yards on steel targets. Like I said, we just really felt like it was the perfect tool for the job and that perfect rifle for a New Mexico antelope hunt. I had also brought Tony Smotherman his favorite hunting rifle, a CVA Acura Plains rifle that I had fitted with the Burris Eliminator scope. This week's gun segment is sponsored by Barry's Versa Cradle. On the bench or at the range, the perfect tool for every job. We shot until dark and again the next morning because we wanted to be dialed in and ready when it came time to start hunting. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles, a passion for precision, every barrel, every rifle. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition, loading bullets one round at a time. After about an hour of shooting to start the day, Tony Smotherman felt like he was truly dialed in with the muzzleloader and eliminator scope combination, and he was ready to start hunting. So we loaded up the trucks and headed out. Why is one the With antelope hunting, there's really no rush to start the day. These are plains animals. They're not going to retreat into the dark timber when the sun comes up. They're out on the prairie, they're in the wide open, and you can hunt them all day. This is a leisurely style hunt, and it's done by driving around in four wheel drive trucks, covering lots of country, using your binoculars and spotting scopes, locating a good buck, and when you find one that you think is good enough to warrant a stalk, you put your boots on the ground. 
This is a hunt that truly requires good optics. You've got to have binoculars that are clear and crisp and will let you not just see that there's an animal out there, but get a pretty good idea of what it is and then be able to switch over to a spotting scope that will cut through the heat mirage and let you look at an animal from a long distance and be very precise as to what that animal is. In this particular case, we're using the Burris Signature HD binoculars in 10 by 42 and the Signature HD spotting scope that Burris just came out with. That may be the best spotting scope when it comes to bang for the buck because it is crystal clear, it is truly HD, and it is easy on the eyes to look through. And after about an hour of glassing, we finally spotted a buck that Tony decided that he wanted to make a stock on. Just want to kind of get you up to speed of what's going on. So we've covered several miles to get around on the other side of the antelope that we saw uh, when we was over there glassing with Steve. And we've covered a lot of miles to get with still a mile away, but we got a lot of walking to do ahead of us. Upside is, got the wind in our face. Um, and once we get over top of this ridge right here, it's relatively flat up there and there's a drinker up there and we're about midday right now sun's about straight up in the sky so the upside is what we can tell so far is it looks like everything is starting to come in towards these drinkers or a water tank if you will so we're going to get up on top see if we can cover some distance and again i shot this morning a very good to 300. downside is we've got a ton of wind now that we didn't have this morning but either way we've got to cover the ground just to see what it looks like to make sure to shoot it first and foremost Just made this long stalk on 27 or 28 different speed goats up there, half a dozen different bucks in the pile. One we thought was pretty good, but once we was able to get to six or seven hundred yards, realized it's, well, our eyes failed us a little bit. He wasn't as good as we anticipated. Still a really good buck, just didn't have a lot of hook on top. But either way, that's the first solid stalk of the day, first solid, solid stalk of the hunt, and it's only the beginning. Midday, we met up with everyone back at camp and we learned that my good friend, Cesar Fonte had taken a Boone and Crockett record book buck. And his buddy who came with him on the hunt, Dan Palmieri, had also taken a near record book buck. With the hunt off to a great start, we decided to split up for the evening hunt. With Travis and Tony going with their guide Butch in one direction, and myself and guide Andreas taking off in another direction. This way we could cover twice as much country and look at twice as many animals, which would up our chances for success. After glassing several pastures and looking at a number of bucks, I finally spotted what looked to be a mature antelope buck working his way across a pasture at the base of this hill. I'm not an overly picky antelope hunter. I'm just looking for a good mature buck with some nice hooks on him and I decided I was gonna make a stock on this animal. And sure enough, I didn't have to stalk very far before I ran out of cover. I couldn't have got any closer to these animals. And what it left me with was a long range shot. And I love to shoot long range, especially on pronghorn antelope. I'm shooting a bullet that has an extremely high ballistic coefficient and it's leaving the barrel at about 2,750 feet per second. And I know that the scope, once again, is properly calibrated to that ammunition and that that ammunition is shooting perfectly out of that rifle. I'm very aware of the bullet drop because I have a dot in the scope. But what I'm more aware of is a left to right light but variable wind and I know that the difference between a great shot and a bad shot on an antelope is as little as 10 to 12 inches. Their bodies are not very big. The entire chest cavity is maybe that wide on the entire body. The difference between hitting him in the lungs and having wind drift that bullet seven or eight inches and putting the bullet in here is minimal. I'm very aware of this. I'm trying to track the wind. I'm following the buck in my rifle scope I've got him ranged, I've got my dot, I'm trying to figure out the wind, and I'm waiting for my shot opportunity. 
This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Marathon Seat Covers. We've got you covered. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by Ochacos.com. So there I am. I'm laying prone on the prairie. Got a nice mature buck in my sights and he's 797 yards away, almost eight football fields. His chest cavity is maybe 18 inches from front to back and 14 inches deep. And I have what I believe is about a five mile an hour variable left to right wind. I put the dot on his front shoulder. I feel like this is a good wind adjustment, and I squeeze the trigger. Well, as it turns out, there was more wind drift than I thought. Up where I was at, eight football fields away, it was about a five mile an hour wind. But down where the buck was at, it was blowing two times or more that speed. And this caused my bullet to drift further to the right than I thought. I made a bad hit on the buck. I'm lucky that antelope are not tough animals. This buck made a mad dash out across the prairie. Within a few minutes, he expired. Uh, didn't make me feel any better about a bad shot placement, but it was a good, firm reminder for me of how small the margin for error is and how much more I need to be aware of what the wind is doing at my target and a quarter of the way to my target and halfway to my target and three quarters of the way to my target. And that's something that I'm always very aware of. And I try to make every hunt that I go on a lesson, something that I'm going to learn. And hopefully the next time I go in the field on a pronghorn hunt, I'm better prepared, make a better shot and redeem myself. And they certainly have bigger ones here. I only had a day and a, a day and a half or so to hunt. And I just want something that was a nice, like 13 and a half inch or better buck with nice cutters, decent mass, good representative of the species. And that's exactly what we got. Real pretty buck. And on the other end of the ranch, Tony and Travis were glassing plenty of pronghorn, but didn't find anything that they wanted to take on the first day of the season. So at the end of day one, Caesar, Dan, and myself had all taken nice New Mexico pronghorn antelope bucks. And we all knew that night that the next day would likely provide us with even more opportunities to fill some more tags. The next morning, it was decided that Tony and Butch would continue hunting together and head out to hunt the western portion of the ranch, which has more topography that is favorable to a muzzleloader hunter. And Travis, Price from my office, he came with me and my guide, Andreas, and we went out to the east and we started glassing a number of other pastures that we hadn't had a chance to look at the day before. I mean, there was literally thousands of acres that hadn't been hunted yet. And we just needed to get out there and start covering some country and putting our binoculars to good use. After cruising and glassing several pastures, we spotted what looked to be a good buck. He was feeding with some does and in a good spot for a stock. So we moved up and looked him over in the spotting scope real good. And Travis decided that he was gonna make a move on it. In the open prairie, we couldn't get any closer than 635 yards without risk of spooking the cattle that were also in the same pasture. If the cattle started running, the pronghorn would surely blow out as well. So Travis got prone and we started analyzing the shot. Sure enough, this was a brisk left to right wind. So as Travis lined up the shot, I told him to hold two full mill dots of windage to the left and let the HMR Pro eat. When I looked at this buck in the spotting scope, my first impression is that it had very unique character and a heart shape. And the second thing I thought of is that it had really good height and good cutters and that I should be getting on the ground and looking at this buck even closer and possibly putting a shot on him. Stalking an animal like an antelope in the open prairie definitely has its challenges especially there's nothing to hide behind whatsoever. And any movement that you make in that open country, the antelope thinks that you could possibly be something like a predator. And so making sure that you use any little topography or any bit of grass 
to, to hunker down behind and, and really limit your movement can, can really make, make or break a hunt. And so it's very challenging hunting antelope in open country. Smoked him. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> what a poke. Thank you, Steve. Longest shot today. Though. Yes, longest shot today. Thank you so much. 635. The eliminator. 635 yards. That's a poke. Hey, hammer. Yeah. So oh, like man. top of the shoulders, or maybe even through the neck. I mean, just like pancake. There's yeah. a little more wind than we thought, but. So this was the longest shot in terms of preparation that I've ever been presented before in my lifetime. And, you know, Steve did a great job of coaching me through the windage, and there was a pretty strong crosswind that we had to deal with. And I had to hold a couple uh, mill dots over. I had never done that before. And when you look at the crosshairs, and they're not in the middle uh, of where you normally hold, it's a really odd feeling, but you've just got to trust it, trust yourself, trust your equipment, and trust your coach, and just go for it. Great shot in the wind. I mean, put him right through the neck, and, you know, and he went down like a ton of bricks. Yeah. So, it was a fantastic shot, no doubt. Awesome, thank you so much, Steve. Yeah. Much appreciated. Great shooting. Yeah, thank you. For the shot today. Yep, for the shot today. Yep. Range of alone, man. That's just good. <laughs> great equipment. You know, great coach. Thank you so much. With day two in the books, only Tony had a tag left in his pocket going into the final day of our hunt. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics find what matters. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped ready to shoot. If you'd like to book your own guided big game hunting adventure, give my office a call. I will personally take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing trip of a lifetime. After two days of hunting, everyone who had been hunting with rifles was tagged out. Only Tony Smotherman, Mr. CVA muzzleloader himself, was holding an antelope tag, and everyone back in camp was rooting for him to fill that tag and get that big buck that he was at. Tony has spent the previous two days making frustrating stock after stock on the open country prairie speed goats, and without any luck. But on this morning, with everyone out glassing for him, it didn't take long to find a buck that he had been looking for, and he was off to try and get within range of this big pronghorn and his does. Today is a new day. We don't have as much wind, and we're already spotted the buck that was on yesterday. We call him Captain Hooks because he grows back so far. So new day, new feeling, less wind. Tony is one of the most experienced and competent professional muzzleloader hunters in the world. In fact, we kind of refer to him as Mr. Muzzleloader. And while he can't make a 600 yard shot in a 30 mile an hour crosswind, I can promise you this, that any pronghorn buck that holds still inside 300 yards is in trouble. Smoked him, son. Good job, man. <laughs> Perfect hit. Yes. So I got a, an invite from Steve West to come here and hunt northern New Mexico with him. And a lot of people know Steve, and they know that he knows great locations, and he's well versed in traveling the country. So, so that invite was for sure one that I was not going to turn down. And I am very passionate about hunting with a muzzleloader. And this terrain here in New Mexico uh, took me to school for the sheer fact of, well, there's not a whole lot of terrain to use to be able to close the distance between my muzzleloader and those antelope. But the, the opportunity also that Steve gave me was to be able to use a Burris Eliminator scope, which I think was a game changer at the end of the day for me here in New Mexico. Just like the buck that Caesar shot. He's, he's 
not a giant like he is, but the way the way this sun is out here, you, you can never see ivory tips. And this guy here's got just the tip uh, has turned to ivory, but what an awesome buck. We adapted to the situation and, and kind of the scenario that we played out was is there's a whole pasture full of cattle. These antelope, this buck and all his senoritas were bedded within the cattle. The sun is coming up in the east. We were working our way west. So basically, my, myself, Butch, my CBA muzzleloader, and the two gentlemen holding these cameras right here were coming in from the east, which made us have the sun at our back. We were totally black. So in essence, we looked like a cow coming through the pasture, which enabled us to get to 190 yards, give or take and was able to make a one-shot kill with my CBA muzzleloader out in the most open country I've ever hunted in my life. While all of us had gone on this hunt to have fun as friends and clients and, and, and people who had known each other for years, and some of them were folks that we got to meet for the first time, the reality is, is that Travis and I were there to look over a new outfitter's operation, uh, see the quality of his camp, the quality of the private lands he was hunting, the game, the guides, we're really pleased to come away with yet another hunting opportunity for us to offer our clients. In fact, if you'd like to book a pronghorn antelope hunt in New Mexico or Wyoming or Colorado or anywhere, give our office a call. We'll take your calls, we'll answer your questions, and we'll help you book the hunting or fishing trip of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week we bring you another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures.